Hi there, I'm Neil of Verdant Sculpts. I am a professional sculptor and I make videos about sculpting, molding, and casting. If that sounds like something up your alley, please hit that subscribe button so you can get all of the latest content. In today's video, we're going to go over the molding and casting process of the axolotl sculpture that I made in the last video. We're going to go over mold boxes, pouring silicone, and even some neat resin tricks. So let's get into the video. first thing we're going to need to do is build a mold box. And I start by marking the seam line on the figure with a Sharpie pen. This is going to be where I cut the mold open once the silicone has been poured. The Sharpie is going to transfer onto the silicone nicely and help work as a guide. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a buffer out of foam core. And this is going to raise the figure up a little bit, giving me a little wiggle room when it comes to pouring the resin, as I don't want the resin to go up to the very tippy top of the mold. This will give me a little wiggle room, like I said, and if it goes over, I can sand the base down a little bit. Again, you'll see later it'll make more sense. But for now, I am cutting out that shape with my exacto knife. It doesn't need to be super exact, just making sure that it lifts the figure up off the main base. Foam core can be a little tricky to cut out, just make sure you're using a really sharp blade. Just test fitting here to make sure that it lines up okay, and then I pull out my glue gun. I like to use it on the hot setting so it'll melt that monster clay down, create a nice seal. Just apply liberally to the foam core and press into place, making sure it lines up properly. And now I've got my pre-cut sheet of foam core here that I'm going to glue the entire thing onto. I like to mark the positioning with a pencil there so I can get it into place properly the first time. And again, just using the hot setting. And now I need to make sure the figure is sealed to that foam core. I don't want any gaps in there where the silicone can flow into and get caught. So I'm just using little strips of monster clay to completely seal the figure to the base. And this can be a little time consuming, but it really helps create a cleaner look with your casts. And it helps uh, you know, avoid damage to your mold as well, because when that mold rubber gets trapped under there, it will tear when you pull out a cast, and then the rubber will also get stuck into your cast, so you don't want that. So just take the time here to really get everything sealed together properly and just give everything that final polish, like your signature. And I'm also continuing the seam line onto the mold box itself, so I know where to cut. And I had a pre-cut strip here of coated cardstock that I'm curling into a, a circle and then taping closed and that's going to be the wall of my mold box and I just run a bead of hot glue along the base making sure it is all sealed up. You want to make sure there's no air gaps there so silicone can leak out. And now we are ready for silicone. I used Moldmax XLS2 which is really great for high volume casting. And just pour 10 parts of part B to 100 parts of part A. And then you take both and mix them together thoroughly. I like to mix for around two minutes or so. I don't show it here, but once I'm done mixing, I do place this into a vacuum chamber to remove all the air bubbles before pouring. So here is the degassed silicone that I am now pouring onto the figure. Notice I'm not pouring too fast. And then I use little chunks of old molds to use as a filler, so I don't have to waste too much new silicone and I get to reuse old molds. I just press them in into the gaps with a little skewer. You do have to make sure not to hit your clay sculpture. You don't want to damage it, so you do need to be really careful. 
So that is a great little trick. And after 24 hours of curing, it is ready to demold. So first I just need to peel off that mold box. And I like to trim that excess silicone off the top there with my knife. Carefully peel the foam core off. And again, trimming a little more of that excess silicone just so it doesn't get in the way. And then peeling away from the foam core, just loosening it up a little bit. That'll make it easier to cut open. And then I decided to just remove the foam core completely, give myself a little more room. And now cutting the mold open with the X-Acto. Notice there I'm cutting with a zigzag pattern, and that's going to help lock the mold together during casting. If you just cut a straight line, it's not going to be able to grip to itself. So making sure you key the mold as you cut with that zigzag is really going to help keep it closed later. But then when you get near the seam line, you do want to you want to keep it straight. So zigzag on the outside and then straighter cuts as you get along to the seam line. And now I'm pulling out my figure and he didn't really survive, but that's okay because we will be taking a master cast out of here, which guess what? I forgot to film that part, but here is the cast that I took from that mold. And don't worry, we'll go into casting later, but I am giving this guy a really good polish, sanding and polish, because this is going to be the cast that I make my final mold from. I want this guy to look perfect. So I'm going to take a lot of time and clean up the edges, sand all the surfaces down smooth, and just make sure he's looking his best because how this looks is how my final casts will look. And a lot of people ask me like, isn't that wasteful? Like, why don't you just use Sculpey and then, you know, bake and sand that, and then you just have to make one mold. And that, that is true. That is a, a process that you can use, but one, I don't like Sculpey. I like sculpting in monster clay. And two, Sculpey is not reusable. So, you know, monster clay, I can just keep reusing over and over. That figure that I pulled out earlier, I can just melt down and reuse it. So it's all just up to you and what, what you like, what your process is. But that is my process. And here is what the finished sanded figure looks like. He looks really clean. But that did take a lot of work. As a matter of fact, here is all the sandpaper that I used to sand that guy down. And now for the extra polish, I am using a high gloss polyurethane to get this guy nice and shiny. I want him to have a wet look, and this is perfect for that. And whatever finish your figure has is what the mold is going to replicate. So since he's going to be super shiny, all my casts are going to be super shiny. And that's going to look really cool, especially on those tail fins and the ear fins where they'll be translucent. It's going to look great. So here I am repeating that mold process. It's a lot easier to do the footprint on this one. Uh, now that I've, I've had the figure sealed down in the first mold, it makes a much more comprehensive and easy to follow figure, especially in the strange positioning this guy's in because he's kind of sitting down and his torso is slanted. So you can see I'm, I'm going ab about this second base quite a bit differently. He's got two separate pads for his hands and a separate pad for his feet and tail. The seam line's still the same. That worked out with the first mold. So I'm just going through the same process again. Another great thing about doing two molds is you can kind of work out kinks with the first mold and address them in the second mold. But I didn't have any issues, so I'm doing Pretty much the same thing here. Again, using those chunks to fill out the silicone mold. And we've got another cured mold to open up. And now on to casting. I use Smoothcast 305 for my master cast, which I am creating here. This is an opaque resin. The first cast I take from molds is always my master cast. And that is the cast I just keep on hand to make all future molds. And you want to get a master cast first because the molds will slowly degrade over time. So getting that first cast will get your, your cleanest figure and you'll have that to replicate your molds in the future. I added a little bit of black dye too, which will create a gray resin. So I'm just mixing up that resin and pouring it into the mold. 
which I sealed closed with rubber bands. I'm going to pop that in the pressure pot to remove all the air bubbles. And after about a half hour of curing, it's nice and solid. So I pull off the rubber bands and carefully demold the figure. Definitely want to make sure the resin has cooled off all the way before you pull that out or you will burn your fingers. So you can see I've got that little buffer too on the, the figure that will get sanded down. He is nice and shiny. So that will be set aside for my master cast. So for my production casting, I use cornstarch dusted on the insides of my molds. That helps break up air bubbles along the surface that pressure casting sometimes won't get out. That happens a lot with the translucent resins that I'm going to be using on these casts. For some reason, it creates more air bubbles, so the cornstarch breaks those up. It does create a more of a matte finish, which really works out with this. The gloss that I used was almost too glossy, so the cornstarch knocked it back to just the perfect amount. So I am using Smoothcast 325, which is a translucent resin. I like to mix in a little bit of white dye as well as some pearl powders to get the colors that I want. And this creates a nice translucent shimmery color, which is just perfect. And I always like to mix two different colors to create a more realistic look. So I used black with just a little bit of purple here and mix those up thoroughly. I always mix the powders into the part B and mix that before pouring in part A and mixing the entire compound together. Again, just pulling off the rubber bands and demolding carefully. And unfortunately, all of my demolding videos came out really blurry, so I had a great idea to show you all of these different colors being demolded, but yeah, they all kind of look like this. Um, and you notice me drop that? That's how slippery that figure was. Just a little too shiny. So here's a neat trick I did with a two-tone figure where I masked off half of the mold with some foam core. Uh, I wanted to do a split white and black figure. So I am mixing up the black now. And I'm going to use a syringe to inject the resin into the mold while I'm holding it up so it only goes down to the bottom half. I am then going to put it in the pressure pot, sort of tilted up. And I'm showing you here, it's tilted up on another mold. With, I put a little notch in it to mark where to tilt it, and it cured while it was tilted on its side. So only half of the mold was filled with the black. And now I'm mixing up white to go onto the other side. And I'm just going to pour it into that little hole and just fill up the rest of the mold. This actually worked perfectly. i would never done this before, so I was, I was hoping it would work, and it did. This is like the most satisfying demold I've had in a while. I wish the footage had been a little clearer, but we'll get some better pictures of him later. Perfect. Look at that. So now we need to take care of all those little buffers on the bottom of the figures. And I do that with my trusty belt sander, very carefully sanding them down and turning them as I go so nothing gets sanded down too fast. And you can see I just continuously check and make sure nothing's getting over sanded or under sanded. And I just turn the figure as needed. Sometimes I need to have some of the feet hanging off of the sander as I sand just one half of the figure, or sometimes just the tail went on the sander. But that was the last step, and look at this family of babies that we have here. They came out fantastic. Believe it or not, these still aren't done. They do need to be painted, so I will create another video showing my painting process. If you got anything out of this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.